On this giant-sized episode of A Very Kooky Countdown, we promise you won't fall asleep. As we count down some of the kookiest things humans do. Ouch! It's all coming up on A Very Kooky Countdown. Welcome to this episode of A Very Kooky Countdown. Our number 10 spot is Running Man, just one of the 10 kooky humans we'll meet. I'm running around the world because uh, I, I'm trying to be the first person to run and jog the whole globe. And I'm trying to run across the length of every landmass, uh, and it's extremely difficult. Um, but I've been doing it four years and three months, I'm still going, it's just a matter of time. I hope until I, I actually do the whole thing. Hoping he doesn't blow a sand shoe, this former policeman used to spend his days running around catching crooks. He enjoyed that so much, he thought he would try a lap of the globe. With such a massive distance to cover, some have questioned the distances he's travelled so far. So I've had to also keep things under my, under my sleeve deliberately. And that's caused confusion, and uh, I've been called a liar for that. But I have no regrets because I've had to protect what is so true and dear to me, which is my run. And you know, at the end of the day, as I say, all the passport, the entries, all the logbooks, and all the videotapes must, must make sense. We caught up with a 34 year old on his way through America, the fifth of seven continents he needs to cover to make this record. Some have questioned the inconsistencies between his web-based diary and reports on the ground. Garside admitted that there were some issues, but defended the validity of his record attempt. He insists that when the Guinness Committee looks at the evidence that he's collected during his run, they will confirm his record. The journey started in England, with the run taking him through mainland Europe, Asia and then Australia. From here, Garside travelled through South and Central America and to the United States. The last leg, if both of his are still working, will be to run across Antarctica. Number nine on a very kooky countdown goes to the very kooky antics of Mahed Maliki. Mahed was bored with eating the usual meat and veggies for dinner each day, so he decided to mix it up a little. After trying some snails on toast and sea slug soup, he was still looking for something that really tipped his taste buds over the edge. There was just one dish that had that extra bite, scorpions. The holder of the previous record, American Dean Sheldon, put 21 scorpions in his mouth for 10 seconds. I spoke to them, Guinness, not the scorpions, and I told them that I will break this record. I made an agreement with them and they gave me the guidelines. I was able to put 22 scorpions in my mouth and eat them, winning a certificate from the Guinness Book of World Records. Not just one, but 22, as you do. We think the most amazing thing about this record is the fact that Mahed had to eat 22 scorpions because an American already held the record for eating 21 scorpions. There was a small group of astonished followers who stood by to watch the record attempt. They were amazed and slightly sickened as Mahed played with his food before throwing them in his mouth and eating them. Scorpions are highly dangerous. Their venom can be fatal if they sting a human. Ironically, there was another record broken just around the corner from this, where Thailand's self-proclaimed scorpion queen, Kanchana Ketaku, walked alive from a room of 5,000 scorpions. She'd been living there for 33 days and was bitten 13 times. Back to Mahed, and as he finally puts the 22 scorpions of varying sizes and colours into his mouth, we find out that there is a bigger message to this record attempt. It gave him an opportunity to convey a message of support to Palestinians in the Hamas-ruled Gaza Strip. A kooky record with a cause. I put on a Palestinian scarf and a picture of King Abdullah. Firstly, to dedicate this record to him. 
and I hope to meet him personally, give him the certificate and hope he can make my wish come true. The scarf is to support the children of Palestine, the children of Gaza who were besieged by Israeli forces. I support them with all my heart and ask God to help them and relieve them of their worries. As we work through our countdown, here's a lady that worked right up to the age of 100. Then she thought it was time to put her feet up. Number eight on the countdown goes to Cruz Hernandez, a Salvadorian woman who claims to be 127 years old, possibly making her the oldest person alive. Hernandez says she was born on May 3, 1878, but doesn't have a birth certificate to prove it. The National Registry of El Salvador recently authorised an identity document for Hernandez, based on her baptism, which the organisation president personally delivered to the 127-year-old. Being a midwife for 80-odd years, she saw a number of babies born, but she also managed to have a few herself. A few children. Just 13. And I had some twins. It's also claimed that Hernandez's own grandmother lived to the ripe old age of 120. For the kids at least, there's plenty of time in their lives to do the family tree. There's more to come, including oversized men and beards. Welcome back to a very kooky countdown, our kooky human achievements episode. Life can be pretty hectic these days with work, kids and home commitments. And most people can genuinely say they often feel tired. Our number seven record breaker, Tony Wright, was tired of hearing people complaining and set out to prove a point. Early on, sort of day, day three, day four was quite tricky and I definitely had kind of wondered what I'd taken on really, whether I could actually do it at all. I think it was just patience. I just sat with what wasn't so good and then um, a couple of phone calls came in and suddenly it was like, yep, yeah, let's get on and get this done. Really what I, what I think might come out of this is that if you change some of the basic parameters of how the brain works, you can get radically different results and it's not so difficult as people would expect. A record for the longest time awake. As we continue to show you some kooky record breakers on a very kooky countdown, have a look at number six on this episode with Antanas Contrimus. We call him Mr. Beardman. Mr. Beardman, sorry, Antanas, is already well known in the small Baltic state of Lithuania for having the longest beard in the country. It doesn't really look that long, but the long beard mustn't be that fashionable in the Baltic state. Having the longest beard in the country didn't seem to be enough for this man, so he set out to see what he and his facial hair could achieve. After some thinking, he tried a few different things, including lifting a girl who weighed 61.3 kilograms with his beard. He picked up a Guinness World Record for this. But this still wasn't enough, so he went to extremes. It was time to see what this beard could really do. At a Lithuanian military exhibition, the man with the longest beard pulled off his greatest achievement yet. Antanas managed to pull a military chief and five soldiers over a distance of 13.35 metres using only his facial hair. The Guinness World Champion pulled the vehicle and the passengers down the racetrack, much to the delight of the many military onlookers. The vehicle and passengers weighed almost three tonnes and the force stretched the grey beard to almost breaking point. 
He didn't actually go out to break the record for Guinness. It was just to put on a show for the military games of the Lithuanian army. When the pull was over, Mr. Beardman seemed very surprised that he'd only lost a few whiskers in the performance. We're not sure what he was thinking might have happened, but there was just a few of his long locks missing, which he was pretty happy about. When it was all over, we asked him, why on earth does he do this? Satisfaction. It's not necessarily about keeping my beard short, just getting some hairs pulled out each time. At number five now on the countdown, an amazing and kooky talent from a young Indian boy who stakes claim to a Guinness World Record by memorising 225 random objects. Nishal Narayanam appears just like any other young lad, but his prowess in memorising things makes him a true child prodigy. At just 11 years old, the young man from India's southern Hyderabad memorised 225 random objects in just 12.07 minutes. To break the record, he achieved this feat while blindfolded, and the 225 random objects were lined up on a wall. As he recalled the objects, they were crossed out from the list and removed from the row. While 15 judges from different fields watched on in amazement. Amazingly, the young boy managed to recall all of the 225 random objects, but he also remembered all of the numbers assigned to them. The record is kooky in itself, but how about this for a twist? Nishal is taking this record away from his own school teacher. His teacher made a name for himself some time back by making the Guinness Book of World Records by memorising 200 objects. His teacher was very excited for him and not jealous at all, as he feels proud that he taught him a lot about his unique skill. After accomplishing the amazing record, Nishal expressed his happiness over the feat. Very happy and uh, I feel uh, mm, Oh, very happy because from uh, one year I'm uh, struggling for uh, getting uh, into this uh, Guinness book and uh, today I broke the record and uh, so I'm feeling very happy. Today, uh, Master Nishal, who is all of 11 years old, had broken my record and he had remembered 225 objects. Now I only want to tell everyone that this is one thing is that today uh, Mas Nichel made every one of us proud and not only us but the entire country by getting into Guinness Book of World Records but most important thing is that uh, anybody and everybody can do. Now Mas Nichel should act as a role model and icon and a guide for everyone saying that now if Mas Nichel can do, I too can do. Nishal's teacher believes he can be a role model for children all over the country, saying that everyone can learn how to do the same if they tap into their minds. The lad wants to be a mathematician when he grows up. As our countdown continues, at number four, we fly over to Mexico to meet Manuel Uribe, once known as the world's fattest man, who tries to set a new record for losing weight. The new record will be for a human that has lost the most weight. Manuel has not left his bed for the past six years. And that bed can be seen from an open door at street level, where he often chats with his neighbours to beat boredom. Before my diet was very unbalanced, I used to eat a lot of carbohydrates, pizza, junk food like hamburgers, french fries, a lot of beans, a lot of rice. Food with a lot of carbohydrates. Now I know a lot more because I've been taught how much food influences your body that I didn't know about before. So I ate a lot of food that made me gain weight during many years. So now I know what effect a certain food has on your body. And it's very interesting because you choose food depending on what you need. And imagine the results I've had because I've lost many kilos. 
pues imagínate con los resultados que ahora tenemos, que hemos bajado ya muchos kilos de peso, estoy más sano. I'm much healthier every day. That's interesting. My cholesterol levels are fine. I'm very healthy. O sea, estoy muy sano. At his heaviest, Manuel weighed as much as a small truck, about half a ton. O sea, mi cuerpo sigue bajando grasa corporal. My body continues to lose corporal fat. Yo antes no tenía... But I'm gaining muscles that I didn't have before. O sea, lo que trato de decir, mira, tú... You can notice my strength and my muscles now. ¿Por qué los Why muscle? Because the proteins that I'm eating are helping me. I haven't lost much weight because I'm gaining muscular mass. I will eventually get rid of all of the fat from my body. And I'm going to be physically fine. He's lost around 235 kilos since his diet of grapefruits, egg white only omelets, fish, chicken, vegetables and peanuts started. During the 1990s, Manuel scoffed pizzas, burgers and fizzy drinks while working as a computer repairman in the United States, the home of fast food. All records aside, Manuel just wants to get out of bed and start living a normal life. Up next, the long and the short of our kooky records. Welcome back. There's nothing like a good tall story. Well, here's a really tall one. Our number three record on a very kooky countdown goes to Leonard Stadnik, who can lay claim to the record of the world's tallest man. The world's tallest man must own the world's largest bicycle to fit his above-size frame, and this machine gives him the freedom to get out and about. Stadnik stands at a whopping 2.57 metres tall. That's 8 feet 5 inches and recently took the title of the world's tallest man. His growth spurt started when he was just 14 years old, after a brain operation apparently stimulated the overproduction of the growth hormone. Doctors say he just keeps growing. I have problems with my weight and my legs tire often. I think this is normal for me, but I'm working on this. I train myself. And this bodybuilding machine that was presented to me will help me fight my aches. The bodybuilding machine was developed by a Russian engineer to help keep his weight and height in check. Stadnik left school as a veterinarian as he loves animals of all shapes and sizes, but unfortunately had to quit work after suffering frostbite from walking through the fields to help animals in his socks. He couldn't afford to buy his specially made shoes for his 43 centimeter long feet. From the tall to the very short now on the show, and 14-year-old Kagendra Tapa Mega, who's just 20 inches or 50 centimetres short, and has to wait another four years before he can take the title of the world's shortest man. The young man weighs in at just 4.5 kilograms, and his family and friends are hoping that this record for being so small might help the boy get some funds for his education and healthcare. His friends say they have already raised around $4,000 for a trust in his name by organising shows where people can watch him dance and play. The people at Guinness Book of World Records noticed a story about the boy, but dismissed the record as he's not an adult yet and only when he reaches the age of 18 can he claim the title of the shortest man. But his parents are still hopeful and believe their son will one day make the cut below the rest. They say when people see him at their shows, they can't help but measure him and acknowledge the fact that he is the world's smallest boy and that his name will one day appear in the Guinness Book of World Records. The current record of the world's smallest man is held by a Jordanian man, Yunus Edwin, 
who is 25.5 inches or 65 centimetres short. Kagendra's parents are just happy at the moment that their child is appreciated and say he has no formal education but is happy to play with friends, offer prayers and watch television. We've made it to number one, and today's record holder on this episode of A Very Kooky Countdown goes to this Indian man with the hairiest ears in the world. This is some record to be proud of, but Radhikant Vajpai entered the record books back in 2003 for growing the longest ear tufts ever. A grocer by profession, his ear hair measured a lengthy 13.2 centimetres long when he first took the record. But nowadays, the lengthy lobes have almost doubled to 25 centimetres long. He also believes he should get some sort of government funding for his achievement and is dismayed at the lack of excitement of his ears. The government is not providing any assistance and society is also apathetic. People consider sporting long hair on ears to be an act of foolishness. Had the government commended the feat, society would also have been quick to accord recognition. Before Radhikant, the previous record holder, who was also an Indian man, had 10.2 centimetre long ear tufts. His son is pretty proud though. I have never felt that ear tufts are odd because I am used to seeing them. Once I had gone to gain admission in college along with my father. People were staring and then I realised that it was something unusual. Unusual and very kooky, but we love people like this for our show. Radicant might not have much fanfare from the government, but the local market stall holders think he's pretty good. We feel proud to have one of the most respectable persons from our market gaining entry in the Guinness Book of Records. Our market has gained fame and recognition along with him. That's it for our show. See you next time for a very kooky countdown.